okay uh good evening everybody uh so last uh, few days we looked at uh we already did uh some of the summaries uh that we did on whatsapp so i started doing a series of videos for the 300 page slide slide so that you can get better understanding of most of these concepts so we did the first 50 slides uh the next 50 slides that is 100 so today i'm going to continue from from uh slide 100. i think here we have a quiz we have some quiz you could uh, try them out okay so we're going to look at scope what is scope management so the definition of scope management is as follows so it includes the processes required to ensure that the project includes all of the work required if somebody says please compose a song for me if you're a musician so the question is what type of song do you need how what's the length of the song do you need or do you need an album right uh if somebody says okay make a door for me what type of door do you want how much work will be required somebody says i need a three bedroom flat the question is what type of three bedroom flat are you going to have a Lent to aluminium? Are you going to have roofing sheet? Are you going to have corrugated roofing sheet? Are you going to have is going to be you going to have tag? Are, is it going to involve finishing? So scope gives you a great detail of what is going to be included in your work. Managing the project scope is primarily concerned with defining and controlling what should be included in the project. So scope is very, very crucial when it comes to project scope management. So if you don't properly define your scope, you're going to have issues at the end of the day. So you now have issue whereby you're going to have what we call scope creep. Now, project scope management activities. Now, one of the things you want to be doing is that you want to ensure that you have constant monitoring. Ensure all the project work is being completed. So if you have the scope document, like today now, I'm expecting a scope document from a client. We deployed a mobile app for a client. It's already on Play Store. It's, a, it's, a, it's like a, a mechanic booking app. So you have list of mechanics vendors. Then you have users that can use the app and you have a, an, an admin. Now, once the app has been deployed, so of course, before the inception of the app, of the software, we told the client to do what looks like a scope document. But he didn't do a scope document, rather he did what we call a flowchart. So a flowchart is like a, a UI, uh, you could use uh, Photoshop to do that, you could use Illustrator to do that, you could use uh, Visio to do that, you could use Draw.io. Those are business analytics tools that you could use to create flows or wireframes. So he created that, but that was too top level summary so the app has been deployed now he now said he needs some changes that some things were not followed and the rest so we now told him to please create a correction or a change request document that is based on your initial flow initial scope so we've ensured that the project work has been completed but we want to avoid scope creep we want to ensure that while he's trying to make amends to the app that we already have on play store Want to make sure that he's not introducing new work you don't want addition of scope somebody tells you please do this for me or deliver this particular tax for me deliver this particular project you want to be sure that you don't do addition you don't go beyond the boundary then what is good plating restrict the project only to defined activities and avoid doing more work than required for the project for instance somebody tells you oh that uh, please uh, roof my house for me uh, on what is in your scope document is just uh, a normal roofing sheet but you felt that oh this customer can afford to pay for it he's a he's a big man he has money he has funds if you if you add this for him he'll be very happy he's going to refer you to client that is good plating and as project managers we should avoid that because it's going to add to your risks it's going to add to your schedule it's going to affect your project so you want to ensure constant monitoring you want to avoid scope creep you want to make sure that you prevent gold plating now product scope or project scope uh, project uh, project uh, scope remember the last time we talked about pr uh, product life cycle and project life cycle here we're talking about scope a product is the the, the scope is the correct features and functions that characterizes a product service or results for instance in the banking sector services like savings account and mutual funds are called products 
right so this savings account a client just left the office right now so we built a banking app a banking software for the client so we have it used by several finance bodies so but the thing about the software is that it's a very enterprise level complex software that different clients can use there are some features that are not going to be used by some features what we just concluded with him now is the high yield investment type of account now because uh each each type of account is going to be different so we now have to create a new module for the particular client let me just even bring it up uh, and show you what it looks like um just a second uh so let me tell you what we just concluded in the last uh, 10 minutes. Okay, so I will just create something here and delete it after I finish explaining what I'm trying to say. So I will just put this here, right? I will make it, uh, I'll fill it in with, uh, okay, let me use this. I'll fill in it with uh, make it blank. I want to add some text. Uh, I I put this stuff. Okay, it didn't show up. I want to edit text. Okay, so it's align me. Okay, since it's not coming out properly, I'm going to make this um, just ten, and I'm going to make sure that it is uh, black. Okay, and I'm going to zoom it out. Okay, I don't know if you can see this, you just try. Uh, let me make this 13. Okay, now, so for the banking app I just talked about now. So the client came, and uh, because. Okay, let me get, let me align this to the left. Okay, good. So. Now, when the client came and said, okay, he needed a particular product, we're talking about banking sector service like savings account, mutual funds are called products. So, this is a particular product for a client that uses the banking app we developed at Southtech. Now, because we need to create a particular product for what he calls high yield investment account, uh, people in banking, people can do thrift savings, uh, normal banking, people can do POS services, people can do investment service and the rest. So, so for us to conceptualize this on the application of the software, I had to do a case study for the team so that the team can deploy a product that can serve this particular need. So we just say we need to collect four variables from the form. This, the investment amount, the investment interest, the duration, and the VAT, which is 7.5 currently in Nigeria. Most countries have different facts depending on where you're watching this video from. The investment return, so there are three, four iterations that are, that's going to be computed by the software. The first one is the returns, which is the investment amount times the high yield interest. We, we got this. The VAT deduction, so once you calculate your return, we're going to remove, deduct this amount from this. Then once we do the deduction, then we now give the customer this amount every day right automated on the system so the software does all of this calculation so this is a product high investment account it's different from a mutual fund or it's even from a current account so that is the scope that this particular product handles you also have project scope to deliver a product requirements and design documents have to be produced just like the one i showed you this is part of the project scope and not product scope right so if you have a lot of things that atomizes to sum up to become your project so for each of the products that mix up the project you have to define your scope so that's the scope i just showed you now for that particular high yield investment product so anything outside of that it's not within our scope so it's good that when you're developing projects so there's no how this has been implemented and tested in working and the client comes back tomorrow and say oh please and this is not how i want or whatever that will not be scope creep so avoid that so for you to avoid that, you want to make sure that you have scope, you have it atomized for any of the tasks, any of the projects that you are working on in your organization. Okay, so we're still looking at scope. So what's the next thing? Now, manage scope. How do we manage our scope? So these are the inputs, this is the management, and this is our output. So for you to do plan 
scope management you need your project charter that document earlier on you need your project management plan we've looked at that you need your environmental uh, enterprise factors you need your other documents how do you do that you have to conduct meetings like i said i just finished up a meeting and this meeting was just to have us atomize our scope for us to help plan our scope so the scope management is the process of creating scope management plan that documents how the project will be defined validated and controlled so if we don't define it today how are we not going to be sure when we have actually deployed it how are we going to be controlling to make sure the client does not exceed what that we said we're going to do when we define the scope Okay, collect requirements. So part of the things I did today was to collect requirements to be able to make a decision on what my uh, what was it called? My scope plan is going to be like. I have to collect requirements. So how do you collect requirements? So you use expert judgment. You do some data gathering. You do data presentation, interpersonal skills, and team skills. So we just did a meeting now. So it, it, it's around here prototype so you see i did a prototype i did an example a case study of an amount of a customer for one millionaire right for a particular vat for a particular interest so that is a simple prototype and that's going to be deployed on the application so every other thing is not based on that prototype that's why it's good most of the times when you deal with your clients when you deal with your project you want to make sure that you have a minified version of what the client expects that's going to be at the end of the day you don't come at the end of the project and I say, oh, I have this. No, there's going to be some kind of shock. There's going to be some kind of, ah, but it's not what we're expecting and the rest. What kind of a day you now have to have some requirements documentation. So for today, at the end of today's meeting with my client, I have our requirement. Everybody understands what we want to do. We've just collected requirements. We've just have our requirement documentation. Right? And of course, the requirement traceability matrix. We'll talk about this later on so group decision making techniques how do people make decisions right how do people make decisions unanimity majority plurality autocratic you don't want this kind of stuff right decisions are made by individual on behalf of the group now what we did today was more of this and this it's a decision that is reached whereby everyone agrees on a single course of action right this can be achieved using the Delphi method. We're going to look about this, talk about this Delphi method later on. Majority is a decision that is reached with support from more than 50% of the members of the group. So this is what we did today. We agreed on how the scope is going to be implemented. And for the other uh, client that have uh, a software deployed that is already on Play Store, we told him to send documentation so that we can now have a plurality, plurality of plural, that is two, right? uh so many persons agree on right so that's the different ways decisions can be reached define scope so for you to define scope what are the tools and techniques you're going to be using you're going to be using expert judgment you see some of these techniques they reoccur right they reoccur just know what you're going to be get using what you're going to be using and uh, what you're going to be delivering so this is the input tools and techniques and your output this is what you need to define your scope if you don't have a project charter that document that tells the high level uh sign up for the project there's no how you cannot be able to start defining each of the scope that is going to be implemented if you don't have a project management plan from the previous knowledge areas, there's no how you're going to do that if you don't have all of these there's no how you're going to do that so the question is that since you have this how do you now do the scope expert judgment data analysis right product analysis here we like today now we started comparing different banking products and how we can create something that makes sense right decision making we have to make a decision how we want the particular software to operate of course you need some interpersonal and team skills okay so this is a tax work breakdown structure so work breakdown structure is just divide the stacks into small parts for instance i as a person i've done a little part of this job now i've created this whatsapp group already for the support of this project i've sent another part to another staff then another staff is responsible for testing so invariably i've decomposed this particular task after the meeting today because if you if you have defined your scope this is what i want to do the next thing for you to do is to now break it down right 
have some baseline, have some yardstick. I want to install a door, so buy the door. Or if you don't want to buy the door, that's procure. We'll talk about procurement later on in this course because procurement is also a knowledge area. Do you want to make the door yourself or do you want to buy the door in the market? Which of them? Right? Okay, so this is what a uh, work breakdown structure example looks like. I think I've done this for you earlier on. Uh, new core banking software development. So just like the example I gave to you earlier on. Requirements document. That's what I just did now. Design architecture. I already done that. Somebody else is going to code it. Like I told you, somebody is going to test it. We're going to go live and the customer is going to check all of those things and make sure everything is fine. So just break up your tax. Put it in small piecemeal. Remember, we have another knowledge area in project management called resource management. Right? In that resource, we are going to now start assigning people to each of these tasks. Like I did this today with a client. I also plan part of this. Check the, the database. Somebody else is going to continue this and return to us before in the next three, four hours. He's going to also do this. Somebody else is going to do the testing, right? That's what we call the uh, um, user acceptability testing. UAT testing. So that's what you call UAT testing. So I don't know if the, the client is going to test, then you go to check for quality assurance, then before you now go live. For every project, for every kind of field, you can apply the same thing. Don't forget, when you've done that, the next thing you want to do is to validate, is to inspect. So this is your input. This is how you're going to do it through these techniques. Then this is what you're going to have at the end of the day. Control. So what control scope means is that you don't want to have what we call the scope creep or the gold plating or something that you did not plan for. So control scope is a process of monitoring the status of the project. Like I told the client, please tomorrow morning or by 10 p.m. today, hit up the WhatsApp group. I said earlier on in my previous video that that office that manages the project is called your project management office. At times it can be physical, at times it can be remote. So I said, get back to that group and let us be able to come and keep track. So that's not actually control, that's monitoring. So monitoring and control goes hand in hand, right? Monitoring and control goes hand in hand. So change Control scope is a process of monitoring the status of the project and product scope and managing changes to the scope baseline. We have a baseline. We have what we've agreed on. The question is that how are we making sure that what we said we're going to do, that we've done it? So within scope, are we within scope or have we not gotten up to our baseline? Okay, so this is a business scenario. Uh, this is some key takeaways from this uh, section. We looked at plan scope management, the process of required to ensure that the project includes all and only the work essential. Very critical. You don't want to do what you're not sent to do. Product scope refers to the features and functions that characterize the product, service, or result. Work business structure breaks the project scope into smaller and more manageable pieces called work packages so you could call it wps or work packages so you have wps1 wps2 wps3 wps4 so that's just each of the items that comprises that your product scope so the wb dictionary contains the expansion of the terms used in the wbs so you have in those templates i give to you if you check one of them one of them is going to be your wbd wbs dictionary so you're just going to have a list of all the items in small piece mails. Okay, so you have a quiz here, you have another quiz here, you have a quiz here. Okay, so, so you have some of these processes. So the next thing is schedule. So what is schedule? So plan schedule management. How do we, after we've determined our scope, how do we give timing? In previous project management, uh, uh, versions, you know, we're in version six in 2022. We're going to actively be using version seven. The question is, how do we ensure time is allocated 
to each of those little, little tasks we have within our work breakdown structure in our scope as planned. Plan schedule management is the process of establishing the policies, procedures, and documentation for planning, developing, managing, executing, and controlling the project schedule. It belongs to the planning process group. So this is what you need as inputs to prepare this document. This is how you're going to do it. Then this is what you have at the end of the day. So for you to be able to do your schedule, you have to define the activities. And for you to define activities, like I said earlier on, you have to define your scope. After you define your scope, you define WBS, your work breakdown structure. After you define that, then you now define the activities that will help you deliver this WBS. These are the documents that you need. This is how you do it. And this is what you have at the end of the day activity list if you check the templates you're going to see what an activity list document looks like the activity attributes the milestone list the change request and of course your update document so activities all of the things we're going to do to achieve that uh work breakdown structure look at these tags as a project manager for a new tax mobile app development identify the set of activities you perform to secure the venue for the app launch identified in your work breakdown structure for instance you need to research for a venue you have to uh, sample opinions you have to do meetings you have to get quotes quotes requests from all of those persons that uh, all of those venues that you're going to use in launching the mobile app you are going to now get approval you're not going to make payment you're not going to get a decoration company you're not going to get your team that are going to officiate on that day of the mobile tax launch or whatever so you see it's only a project manager somebody that is well trained like you are now that are able to understand that for us to have a new tax mobile app launch right it's lot of work so you have to break down things in piecemeal and later on also we're going to see in other knowledge areas assign resources to it all the things you need to get permission for but most people when they work on projects they don't actually take their time to break things down so once you don't do that you now start trying to ask yourself that oh we are behind schedule we are behind schedule schedule of course which is time we are behind time and we're not able to achieve this or we're going to patch it up this way why you did not do plan schedule management sequence activities for instance if you have list of activities like i mentioned for instance we expect to the uh launch of the mobile app you have to sequence them. Some things are going to come before some other things. You cannot say you want to pay for a venue when you have not gotten the venue. You have to get a venue first. Also, there are some things that can happen simultaneously. For instance, you can be um, looking for the venue why you are destroying the launch of the app by some beta tester beta testers are people that test an app before it now ship to the main market so that your 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 launch is going to be a smooth launch so we're going to understand what we mean by leads what we mean by lags so there's some there's some tax that are going to be dependent on the other you're going to learn about precedence what should precede another tax so this is where you now start sequencing your activities so there are about four types so there's what to call it the gantt charts so the gantt chart i'm going to drop something on the whatsapp group to just explain to you what explain to you what the gantt chart looks like it's just like uh a bar that have stages of items split into stages right items split into stages so there are different relationship you have finished to start finish to finish start to start and start to finish so finish to start this guy has to finish first before we start this i have to get a venue before i pay for a venue i have to get a venue before i start decorating the venue. you cannot start decorating the venue if you've not paid for the venue finish to finish an activity must finish before the next activity can finish so this has to be finished before this can be finished for instance you can get the venue you can make a part payment you've not made full payment full payment is maybe after the day right 
after the event or the last hour of the event that's the agreement so that is finish to finish right other than that is um um start to finish so in this case where you have the the venue is still ongoing you're still using the venue before you now pay the balance right so it's quite different from where you have to finish up something before you start something so finish to finish activity must finish before the next activity can finish if this is not finished this cannot finish for example an old system must be retired before a new system can go into production yes if your windows operating system times the stop support for a particular product before they now create a new fresh product start to start an activity must start before the next activity can start for instance you have to kick your car before your car starts moving so that's start start for example the project's request must be submitted before work can start on the project chapter so you cannot say you want to do a project if you've not submitted the project chapter so both go hand in hand start to start and of course you have start to finish so you need to understand them able to differentiate them and have had as many examples case studies as you can estimate activity duration so this is where you now start saying for me to get a venue for the app launch i need two days for me to uh get list of venues i need three days for me to now select one i need two days for me to now agree on with my top management for us to visit the venue for instance there's a training we want to hold in we're supposed to hold it in abuja but the ministry said in the budget they have it in nasarawa state so we have to look for a venue as i yesterday we were supposed to go to nasarawa to go and examine the venue so we've agreed on the fee uh it's a cbt center for the it training now before they can make an agree uh, make an agreement and make payment and mobilization so part of the persons that person that was sent to us said she has to now she has to see the venue so you have to see her she has to see the venue first before there's a decision for them to now say okay we're not going to make payment for that particular venue abuja nasarawa is two states you have sharing boundaries in nigeria so you have to define activities and their duration so this is how you do it and this is what you have at the end of the day develop schedule so this is your input this is uh how you go about it very critical we're going to look at this leads and lags later on critical part method and the rest so this is what you have at the end of the day very important your your project schedule your schedule data your project schedule all of these are very critical things when it comes to your schedule because that is time and they say time is money critical part so a critical part is the longest duration part through a network diagram I mean, network diagram is that diagram a long stick light they say I, ha I have to do this i will not do this i will not do this i'll not do this first to third of the month you are doing this fourth to fifth of the month you are doing this sixth to seventh of the month you are doing this. so that's like a network diagram some of the tasks are going to overlap that's the relationship that is here Right? relationship some of them are going to finish before the next one starts some of them are going to overlap some of them are going to be finished to finish depending on the relationship so why i just drew to you can refer to as your gantt chart or your network diagram now critical part is the longest duration part through a network diagram which determines the shortest time to complete the project the shortest time to complete the program float also called slack is calculated in a network diagram so later on i'm going to the purpose of me going through the slide is so that as you learn on the whatsapp group you can have a good idea of what you have in the slide so it's added knowledge to you at the end of the entire course all of the mathematical aspect of project management i'm going to take it just in one class so for now just for you to have a basic idea so later on we're going to look at all of the mathematical aspects and we're going to do case studies case scenarios examples put maths to it come up with formulas understand the formula so that you can be able to understand some of this concept because they're actually real so you have what they call the total float you have what they call the free float so the amount of time that the schedule activity can be delayed at times if it delays some things right you, you're going to have issues at times if it delays some things by two days no much issue we're talking about you without delaying the project finish date for instance i have a training by 6 p.m 
if I come by 2 p.m. into the office, that's fine. So as much time that I can have, that I can delay without affecting that start time or that finish time by 9 p.m., that's your total float. Of course, you have your free float. The amount of time that the schedule activities can be delayed without delaying the early start dates of a successor or violating a project a schedule constraint. So critical path method. So, so these are activities. Uh, if you need to marry a wife, so you meet the lady, you tell her I love you. you spend, of course, you have to spend some money. You ask her out. You date her there or cut her there you marry her so dependencies this has no dependency because there's nothing before this this has dependency because it depends on this guy because before you can say okay i want to marry you i love you you have to meet her first spend money you can't spend money on somebody that you have not seen or somebody that you don't like right so this ask her out is dependent on this and this you have two two guys Date her out, date lady this, this, the marriage proposal four and five, four and five. So these two must be done before four and five, before, so these are the dependencies, before you can say uh, you want to do a marriage proposal. It's highly dependent on these two guys. So the duration, you say four days, you say three days, you say five days, you say four days, you say one day, two days. Okay. Okay, so uh, schedule compression. Like you see in big companies, at times you need to do what they call fast tracking. Or at times you need to do what they call crashing. So schedule compression is done to see if the desired completion, the most of the times when you're racing for time, you're constructing a road, you say before the rainy season. Or you're trying to meet up a client's request before you take up a trip because you're not going to be in town. So you could do what I call fast tracking or crashing. Linear activities are checked if they can happen in parallel. I have A, I have B, I have C. I'm saying, okay, ah, I will do this training. I'll finish up this training. I'll finish up this training. The question is, ah, like just some few days ago, I handled the cyber security training and a, uh, and a pre cyber security training together remotely right so i looked at the schedule because previously i was also strong i was not at work for like almost a week so i had a clash in my schedule so i looked at my activities i made it such a way that i i i, I, I did the first training i started handling b and c together so that i can make up meet up with another tax that is fast tracking so i have done that reducing redundancy and project cycle time crashing this involves increasing resources so in crashing, what I do is I say, no, somebody else should take this for me. So I have to spend more on critical part activities while making cost and schedule trade-offs. Of course, you cannot say you want to do some things very, very fast without incurring some additional costs. So you should understand these two concepts, fast tracking and crashing. Schedule compression examples. So you could review this later on, original duration, uh, we can discuss this also on the whatsapp group this is just an example for you to be able to understand then the next one is control schedule i want to make sure i get to slide 155 or rather 154 more slides before i'm done with this video series then we'll write on from 150 uh, uh 151. now control sh schedule control schedule the schedule you've created you have to control it so that is under monitoring and control if you see the project management body of knowledge, it's so sweet, it's so nice in the sense that it tells you how to carry out a project and make sure that for everything you're planning, you also want to make sure that you're controlling them. You want to make sure you're keeping them in check. So these are your input. These are your, the ways you can do that. So you just learned about schedule compression, list and lag, resource optimization. How do you optimize your resources so that you don't run out of resources, you don't run out of cash? This is what you're going to be having at the end of the day. And all of this can be templates, documents. You have that in the templates already given out to you. So this is a scenario. We can look at it later on. We can discuss it in class. Okay, key takeaways. 
We've just talked about schedule, very critical, very important. It involves define your activities, put them in sequence. Tell all the time is going to help you achieve that. Develop the schedule. Make sure you control them, make sure you monitor them. Then of course, uh, those are the things you have under project schedule management. Okay, that's all. We have some quiz. We're done to 150. Thank you very much. We're going to have more discussions, more case studies, more scenarios, feedback on the WhatsApp group. Thank you very much.